In this video, we'll be talking about lysosomal storage disorder. This is a very important topic for USMLE step one. If you stay tuned till the end of this video, you would get a comprehensive overview about several types of lysosomal storage disorders. So as the name suggests, lysosomal storage disorder deals with some dysfunction in the lysosome. Most of these lysosomal storage disorders are rare inherited metabolic disorders. And this is due to accumulation of substances in the cells and the tissue. So obviously lysosomes are dysfunctional. Lysosomes are considered as recycled bin of the cells. So obviously when lysosomes are dysfunctional, things are not recycled properly. So waste clearance is hampered. That is why toxic substances like polysaccharides, lipids, etc. Uh, basically accumulates inside the cell or tissue and that leads to problems. So toxicity builds up with these accumulated products and that is the key essence for lysosomal storage disorder. Each of these lysosomal storage disorder is associated with some kind of genetic mutation which lead to abrogation in terms of production of a protein or an enzyme. These enzymes regulate an important step in the metabolic pathway. So in absence of those enzymes, the metabolic pathways are gone and that lead to lysosomal dysfunction. So now let's talk about different types of lysosomal storage disorder which are really important in context of USMLE. So first is Gaucher's disease. In this case, uh, the glucocerebroside is not cleared properly due to a deficiency of the enzyme glucocerebrosidase. In Tay-Sachs disease, the GM2 gangliosides are not cleared properly due to a deficiency of the enzyme hexasaminidase. Then Third is Niemann Pick's disease. In this case, sphingomyelin builds up because sphingomyelinase enzyme is non functional. There is also Farby disease. In this case, the deficiency happens at alpha galactosidase A enzyme, which leads to the accumulation of glycosphingolipids. And the last one, but not the least, is mucopolysaccharidosis. In this case, mucopolysaccharides builds up due to a deficiency in the specific enzyme uh, enzyme in that breakdown pathway. So first we'll talk about the Gaucher's disease and in this case glucocerebroside accumulates. It's a lysosomal storage disorder obviously glucocerebrosidase enzyme is non-functional as a result the glucocerebrosides ac uh, accumulates. So glucocerebrosidase enzyme is encoded by the GBA gene and in this case, the GBA gene is mutated, which is creating a faulty glucocerebrosidase enzyme. In normal circumstances, glucocerebroside break down glucocerebroside into glucose and ceramide. So obviously, when this enzyme is non-functional, this breakdown doesn't happen and glucocerebroside accumulates inside the cell. And that leads to several problems. When it comes to the inheritance of GBA gene mutation, then it, its pattern is autosomal recessive. That means 25% is the chance that a child would be affected in the next generation. So both the alleles in this case has to be mutated in order for the child to develop this particular disease. Now let's talk about the Gaucher's disease. Uh, I mean the subtypes. So basically there are three subtypes. The type 1 involves spleen, bone, liver etc but it doesn't involve that much of the neurological symptoms enlarged spleen and liver is the key symptom of type 1 Gaucher's disease type 1 deals with more the nervous system uh, and it involves seizure developmental delays and neurological issues type 3 is less severe I mean the severity is between uh, type 1 and type 2 and it involves both visceral and neurological symptoms but the neurological symptoms are not as severe as the type 2. So let's talk about the pathology of the Gaucher's disease. In order to understand the biology we have to understand the cellular breakdown of lipids. So let's say this is a cell which dies eventually. It has the glucocerebrosides in their membrane so basically, when this cell is uptaken by the macrophage, the, ma the lysosomes inside the macrophage would try to break those glucocerebroside into ceramide and uh, glucose, right? So obviously, this breakdown happens with the help of glucocerebrosidase enzymes, which are present, supposed to be present in the lysosome. Now, in this particular disease, this enzyme is non-functional. So obviously, the glucocerebroside would build up in the lysosome. 
and that caused the problem. These macrophages are now non-functional. They have a typical crumpled tissue paper like morphology and also they are functionally altered. These are actually termed as Gaucher cell. This is one of the pathological hallmark in the Gaucher's disease. So you can see clearly these cells are like folded tissue paper. So these cells, Gaucher cells, accumulates in bone marrow, liver, spleen and lead to all the problems. Spleen and liver actually enlarge which lead to other problems. So obviously Gaucher cells are non-functional. They can also secrete several cytokines which can evoke inflammation. Also lysosomal enzymes can leak out. All these things can make inflammation even worse. Also there could be tissue scarring. Now the key symptoms of Gaucher disease inclu includes bone marrow fibrosis. It can be mild to severe. There could be a defect in the RBC production. Obviously RBC production would go down when the bone marrow is affected which would result in anemia. There could be development of fatigue and tiredness. So obviously there is a reduced blood flow in the bone due to this case and that is why there is a high chance that osteoporosis might develop. So obviously there is an overall bone crisis in type 1 Gaucher's disease. Also, type 1 Gaucher's disease is typically characterized by hepatosplenomegaly, spleen and liver enlarges. So the spleen also uh, has roles in terms of uh, breaking down of uh, platelets. So obviously there is a thrombocytopenia in this case. And also since the platelets are abrogated, there could be increased bruising. Now there is an acute neuropathic condition in the type 2 Gaucher's disease because it involves all the neurological symptoms. So glucocerebroside accumulates in the brain and several places in the brain which lead to a problem in the motor skill. There is a decreased muscle tone involved in muscle spasms or trouble in swallowing in the babies. So the babies often cannot swallow properly and death might occur within the few years of the early life. So the symptoms of type 3 Gaucher's disease involve neurological symptoms but the symptoms appear later on their time and uh, on their uh, lifespan. So obviously there could be seizures which occur in the teenage to the adulthood not very early onset is there. Okay so let's talk about the diagnosis of Gaucher's disease since it's a genetic disease obviously one can uh, test the uh, gene mutation by sequencing methods but also one can look for the glucocerebrosidase enzyme activity from the serum sample of the patient. Genetic testing is more uh, valuable in terms of uh, proper interpretation but it's also costly. And also clinical history, classical symptoms, these things are something that uh, clinicians would al also look for. But there is no cure for this particular disease. There is also enzyme replacement therapy which can make it slightly better. So glucocerebros synthetic glucocerebrosidase is in, uh, infused through the IV route. Also there are substance that can, uh, th there is a substrate reduction therapy that means it uh, inhibits enzyme that actually generates glucocerebrosides. This is how there could be some betterment of the patients. And obviously the symptoms has to be treated, the overall problems has to be managed. So basically supportive management therapy can be uh, used as a treatment strategy. Now let's talk about the second one, the Tay-Sachs disease. Tay-Sachs disease is a rare inherited genetic disorder. Again, just like the Gaucher's disease, it was termed after Warren Tay and Bernard Shacks, both were physicians who described this disease. In this case, the problem is in chromosome 15. There is a gene which encodes hexaminidase A. This is an enzyme which eventually break down GM2 gangliosides. So obviously when this enzyme is defective due to the mutation, then there is a problem in the GM2 ganglioside breakdown. So obviously GM2 ganglioside accumulates in the uh, cells and that lead to several problems. So that is the key essence of Tay-Sachs disease. So obviously GM2 gangliosides accumulate within the lysosomes of the neuro neuron which lead to several type of neurological symptoms. This can also lead to um, neuronal damage and neurodegeneration. Also overall brain inflammation is pretty common in case of uh, Tay-Sachs disease. Basically GM2 gangliosides accumulate in the lysosome and they evoke the inflammation. At least hex 
a null mutation give much idea about these kind of neurological symptoms there could be problems in cns there could be also problems in pns both cns and pns dysfunction is common in case of these uh, tay-sachs disease there would be obviously problem with motor skills symptoms of tay-sachs disease usually appear, appear within the first few month of the life and it includes loss of motor skill infants with tay-sachs disease lose the ability to roll over sit or crawl also there there would be enlarged uh, or exaggerated startled response in the babies there could be loss of cognitive development they fail to reach many motor and behavioral minds milestones also there could be early onset of seizures in the babies there could be also muscle weakness and hypotonia seen in the inheritance pattern of hex a gene mutation is autosomal recessive in nature that means 25% is the chance of a second generation getting this particular disease this particular uh, hex a mutation is very common in inbred population like askenazi jewish population french canadian and amish population so let's talk about the onset onset timeline of tay-sachs disease so there could be infantile onset the onset occurs at 3 to 6 months of the development there could be juvenile within 2 to 5 years of the development chronic in the first or second decade of the life and then there could be late onset where second or the third decade of the life is the time of onset early onset symptoms includes decreased muscle tone abnormal reflexes seizures etc and also there could be visual disturbances and the late onset symptoms include motor defects bipolar type disorders etc let's talk about the diagnosis of the tay-sachs disease there could be hex a activity reduction in the patient serum obviously the sequencing based approach is the best way to diagnose this and there could be eye examination during an eye examination the healthcare provider actually looks for the cherry red spot on the back of the eye and this is the one of the signature uh, signature diagnosis for this particular disease now obviously the ngs or the next generation sequencing has found out several mutations which are associated in the human population and these are some examples of these uh, mutations that are found in mostly askenazi Jew jewish population or in the french population now let's talk about the treatment of the tay-sachs disease so obviously the symptoms has to be managed so obviously when there is a seizure the seizure has to be managed with proper medication there could be also supportive care like physiotherapy speech therapy etc and sometimes the nutritional support has to be provided to these patients next we are going to talk about the neiman pix disorder which is another lysosomal storage disorder in this case there is a problem in sphingomyelin and cholesterol metabolism sphingomyelin generally gets broken down into ceramide and phosphated phosphorylcholine and the enzyme is sphingomyelinase also this particular enzyme is abrogated in this case of, in this case of uh, neiman pix disease in other type of neiman pix disease substances or proteins that are involved in cholesterol transport gets abrogated and these proteins are npc gene 1 and npc gene 2 products so obviously a mutation in these two genes lead to the problem so that ultimately lead to a impaired cholesterol transport now obviously the first type is the uh, neiman pix disease type 1 which which happens due to a mutation in the smpd1 gene this particular gene give rise to the sphingomyelinase enzyme obviously when there is a mutation functional enzyme is not produced as a result sphingomyelin is not broken down and this is basically termed as type a and type b neiman pix disease in type c the npc1 and npc2 gene mutations are more prevalent this lead to a impairment of the cholesterol transport so let's talk about the pathology associated with type 1 so obviously when the um, accumulation of the lipid happens in the macrophages that lead to overall problem uh, in the ma macrophage functionality in this case the sphingomyelin accumulates in the lysosome so obviously the sphingomyelinase enzyme was supposed to break down sphingomyelin but since this enzyme is non-functional it cannot break it down sphingomyelinate accumulates overall in npd type a there is a complete reduction of this particular sphingomyelinase activity whereas in npd type b there is partial reduction of the in the uh, activity of the sphingomyelinase enzyme so obviously the severity uh, matters based on these two types 
anyway overall we can understand and the take home message is sphingomyelin catabolism is abrogated now let's talk about the pathology of type a and type b neman uh, pix disease so obviously hepatosplenomegaly is one common feature of these kind of lysosomal storage disorders also there could be involvement of lung brain and many other organs in this case so one can definitely look at macrophages which shows a lipid laden flattened appearance so these are known as the foam cells these foam cells are non functional anyway let's talk about the onset so there could be early onset of the npda type of disease or pix disease the severity is life threatening in this case the signs and symptom include hepatosplenomegaly feeding difficulties joint pains poor muscle tone and defect in the lung and the intestine also there could be a cherry red spot on the macula type b neman pick disease the onset can be any time in the life but less severe than npda remember in npdb the sphingomyelinase enzyme is partially active not totally abrogated so signs and symptoms again include hepatosplenomegaly lung problems and thrombocytopenia so now neman pick b disease also has other symptoms like delayed growth bone problems anemia visceral organ impairments and many more now let's talk about the type c neman pick disorder so obviously we have to understand cholesterol transport in bit more details to understand this so ldl is uptaken by the ldl receptors in early endosome overall it Uh, forms the late endosome which fuses with the lysosome and now what happens is from this particular phagolysosome they go out with the help of these npc1 and npc2 particular protein and they then get to the membrane of the cell where they are important component of the lipid bilayer so obviously when there is a problem in this npc1 and npc2 gene gene products this transport to the membrane doesn't happen properly and they get stuck in the lysosomal stage and they accumulate there that leads to the problem in this case so neurological symptoms are quite common in type c neman pix disease there could be ataxia there could be dystonia there could be dysarthria that means difficulty in speech due to poor muscle control issues there could be also seizures uh, which can occur at any time of their life also neman type uh, c disease also has hepatosplenomegaly which is common in many types of lysosomal storage disorder there could be disrupted bile flow so obviously it can acu- uh, so bilirubin can accumulate in the blood eventually it might lead to the infantile jaundice platelets can also be trapped inside the spleen broken down and that might lead to thrombocytopenia easy bruising is pretty common onset of type c neman pix disease can occur very early in the life which lead to decreased muscle tone decreased motor milestone there could be childhood onset which leads to clumsiness learning difficulties cognition defect and unsteady gait also there could be onset of seizures in case of childhood onset there could be also teenage onset which has several psychiatric symptoms progressive cognitive impairment etc inheritance pattern of in neman pix disease is again autosomal recessive in nature that means again there is 25% chance that the next generation one child would be affected when it comes to diagnosis again looking at the enzyme activity in the blood is one tactic second one is sequencing and then ultimately clinical history taking and symptomatic analysis is important there is no cure for this particular disease but there are certain medication which can make things a little bit better physiotherapy speech therapy these things can make the life quality a little bit better now we are almost at the end of this particular video and we are going to talk about the farby disease which is another lysosomal storage disorder in this case what happens is the enzyme alpha galactosidase a is defective in this case what happens is the globotriacyl ceramide this particular lipid gets accumulated and that lead to plethora of problems in different organs there could be cardiovascular problems renal complications and also to some extent the neurological complications as well there could be several treatment options which includes enzyme replacement therapy or symptomatic management uh, of pain um, and other symptoms so that pretty much that that's pretty much it uh i think in this video we discussed about all these lysosomal storage disorder in pretty much details i hope this is informative if you like this video give it a quick thumbs up don't forget to like share and subscribe you can support our channel using super thanks you can pay via paytm paypal or upi see you in next video